everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in with 999-21B Wasted Energy at Sims Award at the West Virginia State Championship, but a plethora of double crowns this year as well, too. And this team here has got to be one of the best defensive robots here at Over Under. A lot of great stuff we'll be talking about. Of course, that defensive strategy, how they went into it. They got some great ways so that they're implementing their D-score as well. And I really love this uh, intake that they're running as well, too, and a really innovative climb. So let's learn more about Wasted Energy coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Judah, you know, we got to talk about how your team approached the over-under game. It's such a great defensive strategy for it. So tell me more about that before we go into your robot. So as soon as we saw this season, we realized that de-scoring would be a big part of the game. And right from the off, we've had a below six inch spot to be able to always be a threat de-scoring. Now, with this being said, it's very difficult to build the bot around that. So first we used a flywheel on a arm system with a motor at the base giving us good ability to launch tribals and good ability to de-score as well. However, after state, we realized that we needed an intake. So that's where this intake came in. Now, with this intake, it's all connected to the flywheel's motor. This means that we're not exceeding the motor limit, power, and we're not having to resort to a 5.51 motor to be able to also do that. This sprocket system is a fairly complex system that I can show using this. Lifting the bot up, you can, you can start to see the inner workings of it here. Complex sprocket system with a larger sprocket going down to a smaller sprocket gives us great range of motion. Turning it on, you can see it's fairly fast and with this it means we can intake tribals very quickly, we can move them around the field well and this makes us a really strong force in the game because we can do most of what other bots can do but we can de-score as well. I gotta ask you real quick, you know, coming into uh, a defensive mindset for this, like that just seems like a really tough way to win for things, right? Especially in this game. So what yes. convinced you that that was the right way to go? So as a driver, I love driving defensively. Sure. It is, it's definitely the most difficult thing to do because the offensive robot always has the benefit of the down. With that being said, we have had calls go against us because of that. And really over the season, we refine the way that we drive and communicate on the field as a team to be better equipped to prevent that happening. We had two DQs at a signature event, which really put us a step back. But from that, we've been able to continue doing what we normally do, and we haven't had any other problems since. So I, I'm definitely convinced in elimination matches, it's a great way to go, but in quals, did, do you have to change your strategy up at all for that in order to try to rank a little bit better? We sometimes do. However, we really try and work the best we can with the teammates. Vex as a whole is a team game and we find the key to be able to be competitive there is doing the best we can with whatever teammate that we end up pairing with. Now, with that being said, we try and control the game as much as possible. With the nature of a D-score bot, it gives us good range to be able to really have a sway of what the opponents are doing or what our teammates are doing. Oh, I love that. I, it's a very complete thought process for us, well too, Judith, so I appreciate telling us more about that. I see that we get, really got to talk about this awesome, uh, innovative uh, climb way that you're doing that. Your whole robot is actually lifting up, which I think is really cool. So I'd love yes. to hear more about that. Anything else you want to cover on your robot? So after states, we really knew that after we got a hang in an intake, we'd be able to do everything that other bots could do. And so we have this system using four pistons to lift up the bot. That way we can grab the elevation bar at a better position So, in order for us to really lock in and get a wonderful hang. So can you walk me through the process of when you do a hang, like let's show everything deployed and just kind of walk me through step by step what that looks like. So after we grab the bar, we have four pistons that will retract and these pistons pull and 
the friction prevents them from prevents it from sliding. Now, when you build a little robot like this, right, so you do potentially sacrifice, especially the uncapped rules, like a higher tier hang or something like that. For your team, why yes. was it still worth to keep like a C tier hang versus maybe looking at a larger or higher gig? We knew that lots of bots would have these high hangs, but we also knew that even with a relatively low hang, we could still get 15 points, and that can make or break a game. So on this road, Nathan, talk to me about uh, some of your software uh, side of things. How are you approaching it? And uh, when we were talking earlier, you're using, utilizing PID as well, too. So just talk to me about what that means for your team in regards to approaching this game. For me, it's been a really big part of our game plan and our game strategy this year. This is my first year of X. So when I started, they, we kept very basic and I had a lot of problems with the programming. We had a lot of jerk in the wheels and I wasn't sure what to do. So I talked with you about it and we talked about developing a better plan. So over Christmas, we had to look at the JAR template, which was a template released by the Team Which Won Worlds last year, Jackson Air Robotics, which made it easy for a beginner to start with PID. So I adopted that template early on this year. Um, we've used it since. Since then, I made a ton of changes, including customizing the PID values to best suit our robot. And I now feel like I have a comfortable understanding of the PID. This has meant that our code has been very consistent. In fact, it states, we didn't lose a single autonomous in all 15, 16 games we played. So it's made it very consistent. And my plan for next season is to rewrite my own PID loop, uh, my PID code, so I can do what I want with it and that I can fully customize and make my own. Because especially as I've become more proficient with it, I've had issues with it, like trying to advance, trying to create my own stuff. It's been difficult. So it's definitely something I want to look into the future, write to my own PID and customize to get better. But it's been great and I think it's very beneficial for our robot because it's meant Autonomous has been so consistent since we've developed it. Well, shout out to Jackson Area Robotics, by the way, too, there yes. for sure. I got to ask you, coming in the world here, uh, any major changes that you made at all uh, or anything maybe you wanted to make that you weren't quite able to do so? Um, In code-wise, we actually, we, there were some major changes because a lot of the robot was changed um, as it's still very similar design but it affected the code dramatically. So we tried to set aside some time. So for final week, we worked about, I worked about eight hours a day developing new codes for the bots, um, which would work well, work consistently with the new design. So um, for us, a big part of the coding and a big part of the autonomous was rushing the middle. So even if, if we're offensive, rushing the middle, scoring that center tribal, if we're playing defense, which most of the time we are, rushing the middle, getting that center tribal over on the other side to prevent them from scoring it and to get a two points for us. So that was a big focus for us. And it was a lot because when we're rushing the middle with this intake, it's, it can be risky. Um, as you can see, the wheels are very close. So to intake it, we, got to, we have to find that perfect balance point where we can rush as fast as possible, but have a zero chance getting a DQ and crossing over the line. So that was the main thing for us. And then the rest of it kind of came naturally um, so, but it was a big thing for us, making sure we could rush the middle, get that center tribal, push it over, depending on which side we're playing. Well, Waste Energy looking to prove that defense can win championships, so we'll see if that can happen here. Good luck to you all. Thanks for telling us more about this uh, great innovative strategy. I always love finding robots that take a unique approach to the game. I think your team has done a great job doing that. So good luck here at Rolls and can't wait to see how you do. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.